Hi, and thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to look at a modern training technique and see how it can be applied to traditional training of internal styles of martial arts like Chen style Tai Chi, Bagua Xing Yi. Um, what we're going to look at today is specifically MAF training, M-A-F, which stands for Maximum Aerobic Function Training. Uh, we're going to look at what it is, how it relates to internal styles and its approach to practice, and then of course, how to apply it to your practice if you're interested in that. So, first thing, what is MAF training? Maximum Aerobic Function Training. It's a technique that was developed by a fellow uh, coincidentally named Phil Maffletone, and uh, he was working with endurance athletes and trying to figure out how to help them avoid overtraining and the injuries and stress that it puts on the body. And basically he decided or found that uh, this happens, of course, when the body, those extra stresses and injuries happen when the body switches from aerobic function to anaerobic function. When the cardiovascular system can't keep up with the demands of the muscles, the muscles will switch to anaerobic function, uh, drawing on uh, the energy stored in the muscles, uh, creating lactic acid, causing um, stress hormones to be secreted to incre increase your blood sugars, uh, resulting in lactic acid buildup and inflammation in the body, thereby requiring recovery time and muscle fatigue, etc., etc. And so to avoid all that uh, would require training up to a threshold that does not cause the body to move into anaerobic function. And this is done um, accurately, most accurately, by directly measuring your heart rate. And the heart rate uh, if, if gives you an accurate indication of where your body is at in terms of this split between aerobic function and anaerobic function. So uh, to use uh, uh, math training, you need both a way to monitor your heart rate and a target number. The end result is uh, that you end up training at an intensity that is much lower than a lot of standard training for um, athletics and you're training at an extended period of time or your training period is extended as you gradually build up your aerob aerobic function. So anyone who's done uh, practice like Tai Chi or knows the distinction between internal styles of martial arts and external styles of martial arts this should start sounding familiar. The difference between external hard styles and soft internal styles often is one of the distinguishing factors is that the intensity of the training is often much lower. And then for something, especially like Tai Chi with the long routine, you're doing an extended training period, but always at this lower intensity. So it's almost as if the internal styles understood the principles behind math training before there was math training. And it also means that we can borrow the ideas and the techniques of math training to then help us with our practice in the internal styles. So, how is it done? What are the features of this type of training? Basically, there's two things. You need to be able to monitor your heart rate and you need a target number for that heart rate. Uh, some of you who've done uh, exercise programs before will probably be familiar with the five zones, which is based off a percentage of your maximum heart rate, and there's a calculation for that. It's 220 minus your age. For math training, it's basically the same idea, but with a lower number, 180 minus your age. There's a few other factors that can adjust that number either up or down and that gives you a single number uh, with the idea that, that your heart rate should be at that level or lower uh, to maintain its aerobic function. Now to monitor your heart rate, uh, easiest, most straightforward, basic way of doing it, costs no money at all, is to measure your pulse. You over a period of 15 seconds, count the number of beats, multiply by four, and then you have your heart rate, your beats per minute. 
you can compare that to this target number and as long as you're uh, approaching that number by about uh, 10 beats or less to that target number and not over that then you are maintaining this aerobic training. You can also, of course, doing it this way um, uh, is, requires that you stop what you're doing and check your heart rate. Uh, when you're doing a Tai Chi routine, this is doable, but it is a little bit of a hassle. Um, so the other option that people have is to use a heart rate monitor. This is a gadget that you wear. And uh, there's various versions of it. There's uh, nowadays most people's smartwatches will measure your heart rate. You can also get a dedicated heart rate monitor, one that goes around the chest or one that goes on your arm. Uh, the accuracy of these vary, though all of them I think probably is accurate enough. Least accurate apparently is the one that you wear on your wrist. Most accurate is the one that you wear on your chest, though this one is, I've never worn one, but they're supposed to be relatively uncomfortable. Somewhere in between is the ones that you put on your arm. Uh, now, I found one that, uh, for various reasons, I ended up getting. This is the Skosh Rhythm 24. It's actually a monitor that's designed for triathletes. So these are pretty hardcore athletes. Um, and one of the advantages of something like this is that it has a, ver a variable color LED on it, which means that it will give you feedback on your heart rate as you go. Now this is set up for the zone training, but you can customize it so that you can set the numbers. So say the difference between zone two and zone three is your math number, your maximum aerobic function number. And so that while you're training, you can, uh, by looking at the color of the heart rate monitor, that little flashing light, you can tell where you are in relation to that zone. And if you need to, if it's below that number, you can increase the threshold or your intensity. If it goes above that, you can decrease the intensity while you're training. And of course, while you do that, you will annoy both the traditional Tai Chi enthusiasts who don't like the idea of you wearing a gadget, and you will also annoy the hardcore elite athletes who will wonder why you're bothering with Tai Chi in the first place. Be that as it's made, it still is a useful way to maintain your training within an aerobic function and thereby, thereby avoid the issues that anaerobic training creates with muscle fatigue, muscle recovery, just uh, imbalances in stress hormones and blood sugar. Now, to be honest, uh, you don't need a heart rate monitor. Um, I found that after a while, uh, I was able to gauge the intensity without needing to use a monitor. And if you were able to gauge it quite accurately so that you knew when you got to a certain level in, of intensity, when your body's working at a certain level, then you are in that zone and not above it. The only reason for returning to some sort of monitoring, either manually or with a monitor, is as your aerobic capacity improves, then uh, you want to have a sense of where that new threshold is at. So that's the uh, maximum aerobic functioning. The only other thing I should mention is, of course, traditional training with the lower intensity and the extended period of training is for more reasons than simply this idea of aerobic and anaerobic function. There are many more benefits and intentions behind this approach for the internal styles. But using something that measures where your body is, uh, that threshold between aerobic and anaerob anaerobic, is a useful way to fine tune our training. So essentially that we can find, know when we need to increase the intensity of our training and know when we ought to decrease that intensity. And using that one aspect, that one variable, is a useful guideline that keeps us in the range that actually gives us the wider range of benefits that the traditional training is intended to achieve. So I hope this information is helpful for you. 
keep training, keep practicing, and take care.